Good morning, Calvary. Pastor Chad here with your word for the day. Hey, uh, we're in Exodus uh, chapter 4 again as we continue on this journey to freedom. Now at Calvary, we encourage people to read the Bible. Uh, we know if you read and apply God's word, God will change your life. Uh, that's why we give Bibles away. That's why we want people to be on a reading plan. That's why we do the word for the days because we want to encourage you in scripture. But we know this. If you uh, read the Bible, you're going to encounter some really confusing, strange, maybe disturbing, but definitely crazy verses or passages of Scripture that are really difficult to understand or just don't make sense to us. Today is one of those passages. So I want to try and explain some things and see if it makes sense. Listen to Exodus 4, 24 to 26. This is Moses on his way to Egypt to set the people free. So at a lodging place on the way, the Lord met Moses and sought to put him to death. Then Zipporah, who's Moses' wife, took a flint and cut off her son's foreskin and touched Moses' feet with it and said, Surely you are a bridegroom of blood to me. So he let Moses alone. It was then that she said, A bridegroom of blood because of the circumcision. Got that? Makes perfect sense, right? No, no it doesn't, really. I mean, why would God want to kill Moses when Moses is on his way to Egypt to do the task that God assigned Moses that Moses didn't even want to do? And why did his wife circumcise his sons and, and then that stopped the attack? So here's my attempt to understand one of those crazy, uh, difficult passages in Scripture. So first of all, Moses was an Israelite. Okay? He was a child of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. He's, you know, he was in that descendant. And the way that God had commanded his people to acknowledge the covenant that God had with them was for the males to be circumcised. And that was done, to, you know, all generation after generation after generation. So Moses was already circumcised because he was an Israelite. Of course, he had fled from his people to escape the murder charges against him. He had married uh, Zipporah out, uh, you know, in the desert. He had boys, but he had not had them circumcised. Uh, he had not obeyed God's command at relating to his own family, to his own children. And so God called Moses to a great task. And even after being called to that great task, Moses still didn't obey the foundational commands of God. Kind of unbelievable when you think about it. Somebody whom God has anointed in such a powerful way thinks that, well, you know, those rules, they don't apply to me. And God rebuked Moses in a dramatic and frightening kind of way. So what does that mean to us? What does this have to do with us at all? How do we understand this since we want to read and apply God's word so God will change our lives? Well, here's the, here's the point. No matter who you are, no matter what great task God has called you to, it still never excuses disobedience. It just doesn't. You might think, well, I'm, I don't have to follow those rules or God doesn't expect the, me to, to, to do that. Yes, he does. In fact, Jesus put it this way in John chapter 14, verse 15. He said, if you love me, you will obey my commands. If you love me, you'll obey my commands. It doesn't say if you love me, you'll do great things for me or you'll be really expressive when you worship or people will think you're a wonderful person. He said, if you love me, you'll obey me. You'll do what I ask you to do. So uh, no matter who you are, that if you love Jesus, uh, do what he says. Don't make excuses. Don't pretend like it doesn't matter. And please, above everything else, uh, live that life of obedience with your family, with your children, with your parents, with your siblings, uh, with whoever you have influence on. Let it start at home uh, because then God really is going to bless you. So I hope that makes sense, and I pray you have a great day. God bless.